Greetings comrades, this is Tim, and this is the first in a series of uh, probably four videos that demonstrates uh, my approach to getting the rally book information into the GPS to be used during a, uh, a leg. I'm going to be covering the first objective during this video, and uh, we'll cover the other ones later on. And we're going to mock by a set of iron butt rally waypoints in Garmin Base Camp that visually enhance and facilitate selecting a IBR leg route. Going to be using these resources 2013 bonus listing, the uh, waypoints that were distributed for that rally. Of course, for our Garmin Base Camp. Uh, two GPS's that I use, I'll load it up there, and then uh, using a rally leg plan tool that uh, I use to help time out a route. This is the basic process. Uh, most of you folks that uh, are planning for the Iron Butt Rally are familiar with this. Uh, I stopped using Easy Bake as a way to uh, massage the uh, distributed waypoint uh, data. I now use the Easy Peasy method that I so coined it. And uh, this is the uh, process to enhance the waypoints. Give you a moment to look at that. I'm going to use the uh, conventional uh, waypoint naming uh, format of having a code, the points, and the availability. Uh, because of the uh, way that the 2013 Iron Butt Rally information was distributed, I don't use page numbers or leg numbers uh, as the uh, uh, Bonus listing is in alphabetical order, so it's pretty easy to find something if you need to look it up. Uh, the particular shape uh, and uh, colors for the map symbols that I use, uh, it's an individual choice. I recognize that. and This is my selection. Uh, green means any time, of course, and uh, the blue is for the blue sky of daylight hours only. And, of course, the red is the uh, caution. There's a timed component to that data. Okay, so uh, let's uh, bring up base camp and take a look at it. Uh, this is my default uh, database that I use uh, on a regular basis. It's full of all the trips and things that I've done over the past several years. Uh, I don't like to do my uh, iron butt rally planning uh, and using it uh, in this database, so I've selected a uh, practice database for this video and I'll show you how you do that. You can create as many of these uh, databases as you like. Uh, I'm going to use this practice one. This is kind of analogous to the old uh, map source uh, single file issues that the uh, most everybody's familiar with that use map source that uh, lamented uh, being gone in base camp but uh, you you can get around that uh, default database by just creating these uh, other databases well here's a basic configuration uh, a list a folder with uh, several lists inside uh, you can see each one of these guys are, are are separate and used for different things and the uh, first thing we want to do is get the distributed information into the database and uh, uh, you can see here that it this is the 2013 stuff uh, it's in a GPX file a GDB file and the uh, text file a text file is the things that most people pop into easy bake and use that to massage and then go through uh, exporting it to a CSV file and then then uh, G7 to win and then finally get it into your uh, uh, mapping software. Uh, during this uh, video, I'm going to show you to put it directly from the base camp uh, uh, into base camp directly from the, the bonus listing. So we just imported the, the waypoints, it's all 200 of them, and we're going to get it into our list folder by moving it there. It pops it in. And uh, you can see that it uh, is the full list of 200. Not much uh, you can do to visually plan out a route after you selected the leg waypoints. Uh, they all look the same and 
it's kind of hard to see, of course, and that's what this whole process is about. Is about. So uh, let's first uh, make sure that we've got it sorted by name so that we change it. And uh, what I'm going to do is uh, do a couple in leg one, and I'm going to copy these guys into leg one. I'm going to send them in there. And it just pops them into leg one. And uh, now I'm going to begin to do something with them. And here's the process I use for the uh, easy peasy method. Uh, I uh, bring up my uh, waypoint symbol chart and just pick one. The first one in the in leg one is uh, ACDC. ACD, sorry. And uh, just click on it, type in the points and its availability. Let me see if I get caps locked on. Okay. And then we select the shape for it. This would be a uh, you know, circle, so it's uh, blue. Pop it right here. I always put the uh, uh, availability in the title of the waypoint uh, because uh, not all uh, GPSs support the Garmin uh, waypoint symbols that are in the in uh, Basecamp. Uh, my 665 does, it shares the same ones, but the uh, uh, 590 doesn't, changes them to the little heart things. Uh, so you always have that. I don't, I don't look at the symbols on the GPS anyway, I always look at the, the map or the uh, uh, title of the waypoint. So that's, that's the basic process. Uh, now, some people uh, uh, would just click out of here, but uh, in Basecap, you don't have to do that. You can just uh, select the next one, and the next one is 81. And uh, if I just click on 81, and it, it pops it up, and you can see that uh, ACD remained uh, as I edited it. It's called dynamic uh, saving, and it's uh, very, very uh, helpful. And this is uh, anytime green. The next one is AER. Click on it, pop in, there's 99 points, and this one's timed, and uh, it's uh, 9 to 8 p.m. Doesn't have to be exact on the time thing, uh, you're going to check it anyway. So this is a uh, red box. Next one is AGB, and you can see. I've already done up leg two, and it took me 20 minutes to go through the 76 waypoints, uh, and uh, it was uh, fairly quick. Uh, when I used to do the uh, 2013 and 2011 stuff in Easy Bake, it would take the same amount of time, about 20 minutes to type in all that stuff, uh, except now I don't have to mess with all of the uh, uh, post-processing after you get stuff done in Easy Bake. This is a daylight only, so it's a square. But you get kind of, kind of get the idea. Uh, works pretty good. And uh, I've already done leg two. You can see here. Bring that up on the map. And when you get done, you uh, are like in this list here. When you get done, you have all the waypoints in, and uh, all the ones that you didn't use for that leg, you can just uh, get rid of those guys. You just uh, highlight a bunch of them, and, and uh, it's easier to sort by symbol, kind of glumps them all together, and you can delete all the ones that uh, don't belong in that leg. Of course, I didn't finish out all of leg one, but uh, this is just to give you the idea. Got a whole bunch of them. Uh, you're not uh, destroying anything. It doesn't uh, uh, cause them to get, go away. Besides that, if you wanted to just bring them back in, uh, you, you got them right here, right? They're all there. So. Uh, this is the end state that you want to get to to uh, help plan for uh, the next step, which is the uh, go from point A to point B. 
and uh, use those as the start finish. The, the uh, start finish rings are nothing more than than uh, uh, waypoints that uh, I dropped in near the start point and the finish point and assigned them a proximity each and then it ends up putting that. If you didn't want those in your, uh, after you get done, after you get through selecting a route, you want to get those out. You don't want to transfer them to your uh, GPS. You just uh, take them out and then you're just left, left with the, the start point. I use A for the start point and B for the finish point. Of course, the idea is to ride from point A to point B and pick up some bonuses along the way. And uh, you'll probably have a route here, and we'll, we'll cover that in the next couple of videos. Okay, so if you ever want to uh, uh, see how it looks with everything, you just pop it in like this, it shows everything that's in that list folder. If you only want to see that one leg, you just select that. If you wanted to put the uh, start point and finish point rings back in, easy, cut and paste, uh, control C, or you can do like that, copy, and then paste, and they go right in. All right, that uh, covers this portion of the video. So the next one's going to be selecting a route from point A to point B and uh, determining uh, uh, how much time we're going to spend for each of the activities. All right, hope this was useful. Thank you very much.